Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. This is DM Tips for Vandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk, Chapter 1. If you're a player, there'll be spoilers here, so please play the adventure first and then come back and let us know how it went for you. Uh, a Dangerous Journey, Chapter 1, is for character levels 1. The project lead is Amanda Hammond. The adventure is available on D&D Beyond and soon in hardback. We're going to be looking at Chapter 1 here, A Dangerous Journey. This is a pretty quick chapter. If you are, however, running it in a convention or a game day, uh, setting, here's what I'd recommend for the pacing. You can start out with the party coming upon the Goblin Ambush. You can flash back to character intros and why they're traveling to Phandalin. You can intersperse that with the Goblin Ambush, or you can do that all beforehand. You'll want to get the ambush kind of wrapped up before the end of hour two, probably hour one and a half. And the party should be on their way overland to find the Goblin Hideout. You want to be getting into the Goblin Hideout between hour two and three. Give the party a good hour and a half, two hours to explore the hideout and deal with the goblins and the bugbears and such that are in that hideout. The pacing, you can adjust the pacing, um, adding some overland encounters if the party's going pretty quick, and also by how much interaction you have between the party and the various NPCs. Okay, so why is the party traveling to Fandelwer, Vandalin uh, from Neverwinter? They have a friend named Gundren, Rockseeker, who is traveling ahead to Fandalin, uh, and he has some supplies that he pays the party to take there for him. He's going to go ahead with a friend of his named Sildar. Uh, the party will follow behind in the wagon. So that's basically why they're heading there to Fandolin to start the adventure. Several days away from Neverwinter, along the Tribor Trail, they have their first encounter. And let's zoom out on these maps here. So these maps are by Heroic Maps. They have the site of the Goblin Ambush. They have an overland travel map, which I split into two just with a white overlay here. So I could do two different encounter areas if I wanted to. And they have, of course, the Goblin Hideout map. Another thing that they do is they have a lot of ideas for how to kind of dress the adventure, things about the goblins or things the party can find, ideas for how to change the adventure up, which is a really good idea for this adventure because a lot of players might have already played this adventure. So tweaking it around a little bit will give it a you know some new life. So Lost Mine of Fandover Maps, uh, you can find that on Dungeon Master's Guild by Heroic Maps. Here's an idea of the extra stuff that they have they've put in there for you. There's like four or five pages of this extra information. Uh, an example, Anwax fires using a short bow and ululates as she attacks. She has a mean and contrary nature, defying orders from the other goblins and attacking with a vengeful zeal. She sports vi various animal tattoos. That came in handy because my party actually captured Anwax and had her working for them. And turned out she wasn't the best person to get them into the goblin caves because all the other goblins were kind of leery of her. Here's some examples of the maps. Like like I said, they're just gorgeous. And there are tokens by Devon Knight. So if you like the top-down tokens, these are fantastic. The, the horses I used for sure for the adventure. Let's look at... Um, oh, also Heroic Maps, they have a Patreon. Can't recommend that highly enough. They do like four or five beautiful maps every month for like $5. It's a great deal. Highly recommended. Okay, so back to the Goblin Ambush. These are these horses are tokens from the Devonite tokens that you can get with that package. The wagon is also with that package. I took the uh, empty wagon and made a hand cart out of it. This is an example of one of their ideas for changing the adventure around a little bit. So in the original adventure, the party comes across a couple of horses that are dead on the trail. In the new adventure, that's changed a little bit. In fact, a lot of little things are tweaked all throughout the adventure. So a uh, careful read will kind of illustrate that to you as a DM. The horses are alive in the new version. I left them dead because I have these great tokens. And um, the recommended encounter change up was to make this where the goblins are coming and shaking down a farmer traveling along the road. And the party arrives just as that's happening. That worked out great. Um, unfortunately, the, the farmer was killed by the goblins. So the party really had some skin in the game after that. Having seen how evil these goblins are, what a menace they were, um, the adolescent boys, two teenage boys, the party helped out, gave them some gold, sent them on their way toward Neverwinter. So it was a it was kind of a, kind of a heart-wrenching moment, uh, but uh, gave them some skin in the game. So I like that. That's really the idea. And they have other ideas for how to modify that encounter as well that you can get with their package. As the party's approaching, you can give them this picture. This picture is by James RPG Art. You can see the dead horses there with the arrows in them. And James RPG Art has also a Patreon. And at the different levels, you can get... Um, even animated images. You can see goblins sneaking along the trees there. So that's really cool. So check out James's Patreon. That's really nice. Um, the music you're listening to is Sundapple Trail. And I'm also going to use, let me show you these. These are from Tabletop Audio. They have a Patreon as well. 
highly recommend that one as well. Uh, lots of great music. And a lot of the music is also built into Roll20. And all these ones that I have kind of set out for Vandelver are in Roll20 right now. So Sundapple Trail. Then we got Goblin Ambush that you can kind of throw over the top of the Sundapple Trail as the fight with the goblins takes place. There's that one. And then when they get to the Goblin Cave, later in the adventure, you can play this for the Goblin Cave. It's got the river running through it, various cave sounds. For that. Some, you know, sounds of wolves and other things. Really cool. Really cool. Um, then these other ones I'm going to be using later on in the adventure. Forest Day, Forest Night, handy all the time. That's the uh, maps and the art and the music and the tokens. Lots of resources out. That's what's kind of fun about this adventure is it's been out for a while and there's lots of resources available. Okay, now let's talk about the plot of the adventure. The party is traveling to Fandelver, or Fandolin, and they're following behind Gundren. They arrive here. These horses, after the fight with the goblins, these horses, they'll find out, are actually Sildars and Gundrins. Uh, they might notice that before the fight even starts, or if not, they can certainly see it when they search the horses after the fight. The fight, uh, you can do it kind of however you want with the goblins, or if you want to arrange them. I put one in hiding up here that the uh, high perception ranger spotted for the party. There's five of them here. The battle went pretty well for the party. They captured one of the goblins, which was ideal, because then they could find out some information about the goblin caves. They didn't maybe capture the most ideal goblin, having captured Anwax, the most contrary of all the goblins, but it worked out well for them. They notice the horses are Gundrins and Sildar, so they probably will know, probably will think the goblins took them. If they capture a goblin, they can confirm that. If they didn't capture a goblin, they can find this trail leading to the north, and you can have them actually find signs of human-sized bodies being hauled away. So hopefully that'll get them to go check out the cave. If they don't, they can go on to Fandelver, Fandolin, I mean, Find out Gundren never arrived. Someone there can recommend they go back to the ambush site and maybe see if they can find out what happened to him. So assuming the party does go to investigate the uh, Goblin Cave, you have some overland travel. And here you can kind of add an encounter or two if you need to, if time's going too fast. There are a couple of encounter search in the area. Okay, so there's a snare 10 minutes down the path. You can spot it with the wisdom perception check or else it'll pull you up into a tree. So I just, these are all in the GM layer. The party doesn't see that. And I have some sturges over here in the trees if I needed to have a random encounter. And then further along, there is a pit, uh, which the party could fall into, a 10-foot deep pit. So there's that on the way there. And then you come to the goblin caves themselves. Another awesome picture here by James RPG Art, the goblin cave entrance. Now you'll note, if you look at the adventure, read it carefully, there's a lot of new additional monsters added. They've added like three goblin bosses, multiple additional wolves, a poisonous snake... I think it's overkill. So if you're DM and you're running this for the first time for brand new players, I'd strip several of the goblin bosses away, several of the wolves away. Just kind of be careful. Add them in if the party's doing good. If they are, maybe they can take on a little bit more. But if they're trying to fight everything, they're going to be quickly overwhelmed. Which, you know, for a brand new party is not a great thing. For an experienced party, they should learn and know that they shouldn't just fight everything they face. But in the encounter here, uh, another recommendation from Heroic Maps was to throw a spider in the wolf cave, which I did. That was a lot of fun. So you have the spider in there. After the party finishes, you know, fighting the goblins, the spiders are like webbing up the entrance. So the party has to face the spider to get out. That worked out really well. Now, the party's coming in here, and, you know, the plot is find Gundren. Or they get here, they won't find Gundren. They will find in Clark's cave, Clark being the bugbear and the leader of all these goblins, Various things taken from wagons and such, and even some stuff from like the Lion Shield coaster. They searched the cave. Uh, most of the supplies were marked with the image of a blue lion. And so, if someone can make a history check, they can determine that that blue lion symbol is the Lion Shield coaster, and they'd likely pay a reward for the return of their supplies. You no, know, a good reason to grab those supplies, head on to Vandelver, find the Lion Shield coaster there in Vandelver. But the main source of information here, besides the fact that Gundren's not here, and they need to probably go on to Vandelver, is Sildar. So Sildar is being held captive. And Sildar, he knows quite a bit. He was, of course, traveling with Gundren. Uh, he was looking for a human wizard he knew, but that disappeared shortly after arriving in Vandalin. That's why he was traveling there. He knows, having talked to Gundren, um, I guess Gundren spilled the beans that the Rockseeker brothers had found the legendary Way of Echo Cave. Sildar had also overheard some things about a black spider, and that Clark was ordered by the Black Spider to waylay Gundren and send Gundren on to the Black Spider. But Sildar doesn't know who the Black Spider is or where the Black Spider is. 
He knows that Gunnarin had a map to Wave Echo Cave, so another reason to go find Gunnarin somehow. He knows there was a strange goblin, and this is an addition with the uh, Vandelver and below. The strange goblin uh, with an elongated head. The other goblins didn't seem to like him much. Gave them a bad feeling. Gave Sildar a bad feeling. Um, he whispered to Sildar, you're not what Ruxethid wants. Sildar doesn't know who Ruxethid is either. Finally, Sildar says he can reward the party 10 gold each if they'll escort him on to Fandolin. So, plenty of reasons for the party to go on to Fandolin. Could any of these goblins know the way to Kragma Castle? Or know the way to where Gunwin was taken? Perhaps, but I'd play that down as a DM because you really want to get on to Fandolin. If they skip Fandolin and go right to the castle, cool, they can do that. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff in Fandolin too. And eventually, with Fandolin and below, Fandelver and below, the party's going to want to get to Fandolin and get to know all the various individuals there and sites there. So that's it. That's chapter one. Lots of great maps here by Herco Maps, uh, pictures by RPG, James RPG Art, music by Tabletop Audio, a really fun adventure. Easily fits in four hours. Probably do it in two if you didn't throw any extra encounters in there. So let me know how it goes for you when you run it. I'd love to hear it in the comments below. And look for us. There's a video of us playing this adventure that you can check out. Put a link to that in the description below. And look for us to do the next adventure uh, in a couple weeks. Talk to you all later. Bye.